manifestation as I've come to experience, because I have been manifesting and being in tune with manifesting probably ever since 2007. And I have come to learn a couple of things. One, you never stop manifesting. Manifesting is always happening, whether you are intentional about it or not. <laughs> things will manifest in your life. And the other part of it is if you are in tune with it and you are connected and aware of what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are, you can you can absolutely make it a lifestyle for in your benefit. Hello and welcome. Welcome to this episode of Daily Soul Bites. And this is a show where we interview expert authors and entrepreneurs and coaches to share their insights for the expansion of collective consciousness. And today, my guest is Star McGee. Welcome to the show, Star. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I love I love being here with Star because we both are passionate about manifesting. And so let me read your bio before we start, Star. Mm -hmm. Star McGee has been on her spiritual journey and enlightenment of manifesting the life of her dreams. She left a toxic relationship, lost 100 pounds, and has started her own business into entrepreneurship. She provides empowerment and true transformation with her exclusive app, podcast, and coaching services. Thank you for being here with me, Star. It's sometimes so difficult for all of us. That part of it where you have to believe in the worth of it, that you're worth it. Because we have all the manifestation in different levels. So just as you believed you were worth one level, you manifest that thing and then you find yourself struggling with the next level. And then you have to believe you were worth that level again and again. Because that's something that I have had to come to really understand. That manifestation in levels, worth in levels, we're constantly growing and it just never ends. It doesn't. Ma and I feel manifestation as I've come to experience, because I have been manifesting and being in tune with manifesting probably ever since 2007. And I have come to learn a couple of things. One, you never stop manifesting. Manifesting is always happening, whether you are intentional about it or not. <laughs> Things will manifest in your life. And the other part of it is if you are in tune with it and you are connected and aware of what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are, you can you can absolutely make it a lifestyle for in your benefit. Mm -hmm. A lifestyle meaning the habit. Yes. Yep. Like, the yep. Awareness. The awareness, like that is your lifestyle. And I think that is when, when I actually came in tune with that and learned that I was just blown away. I'm, I couldn't help but think, oh my goodness, it absolutely is a lifestyle. Like it just like in, in wanting to eat better and being conscious of those things, it's the same concept but applied to manifestation. Yeah, because mm. there's the law of attraction, which talks a lot about how we can come to resonate at the frequency mm -hmm. of what we want. And how would you advise anyone who is starting out thinking, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. This is something that is the natural being that we are. Manifestation, you were right. I totally agree. It's happening. We wake up, we're manifesting. In the astral realm, we're manifesting. This is who we are. This is this is how reality comes to be. We are turning the waveform around us into matter just by the belief things we are perceiving, the perspectives we are holding. We are converting 
this environment around us mm -hmm. into being. We are making it come to be. The very baby steps of law of attraction. If someone comes to you, Star, and they say, I have not been manifested. I don't even know what beliefs I hold. Mm -hmm. I am starting from ground zero. How would you begin to work with them? And this is another part of this thing about me wanting to know what your clients can expect from you. So they come to you and they're completely non-versed at all in mm -hmm. understanding their own beliefs, understanding where to begin. Mm -hmm. Where do we begin even if we do not have that awareness? I think the the most powerful thing you can do is get yourself a journal and a pen and sit down and let it flow through you onto paper on what it is you actually want and be incredibly clear and concise and take the time. It may not all come out of you in the snap of a finger. It might take some time to reflect. And I think it's important that when you first start that you get quiet. Try to get yourself as quiet as possible externally and internally. Even if it only starts for three to five minutes, just be completely quiet. And in those three to five minutes when you are done, write out what came to your mind. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything. You mm -hmm. know, it could be, oh, I needed to get groceries and I forgot the butter. <laughs> you know, it can mm -hmm. be anything. But get it out because that's purging those thoughts to make room for what you what you do want and how you can get clear. So mm -hmm. sometimes it can come really fast and sometimes it can take a little bit. And that's okay. I think in the world that we live in today, we are in such a perpetual state of go, mm -hmm. go, 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 go. And so we're constantly feeling and thinking like, okay, well, my thoughts and my actions all have to happen at that same pace. And mm -hmm. it doesn't. The beautiful part of manifesting is you can make this whatever you want. And that's the fun part. That's the fun part. Like you can make it whatever you want. Like it's so cool. <laughs> so take the time, just get clear and give yourself some grace to really think and really feel that out. And I'm hearing the word compassion. <laughs> compassion. Because it takes, we almost feel like there, there is definitely um, something about trying these techniques that make one feel like I am odd. Mm -hmm. I am odd because I'm having to pause. I am odd or it feels off sometimes because it's not what we've been conditioned to do. Mm -hmm. Writing down our thoughts as opposed to just letting them flow freely or consciously. Mm -hmm. Bringing them to the conscious almost feels odd. Mm -hmm. Feels a little bit uncomfortable at first. And I think it's important for us to say that, that it may not feel comfortable at first, but it is what needs to happen because if we want to get a new reality, we have to do things in a different way. So Absolutely. I think that awareness that it may not feel right, it may not feel like you're doing the right thing to start with, but it is. This is why it's called reprogramming, rewiring. It's a new way and it will not feel right when we start. And I think that is the key thing because um, I know that when I started to journal, um, I felt... I I was wasting my time. Mm -hmm. I felt I you know this is the, this isn't the right way to do it. But we have to be aware of those thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have to write them down. We have to get really clear, and then we can align to what we want and what we do not want. But first, we have to become familiar with them. And this is what Daily Soul Bites, my book, is about. 
It is really about alignment, becoming more familiar with the different perspectives that are there. There is perspectives of the higher self and perspectives of the physical ego self. And we have to become more familiar with the perspectives that we then can align. Alignment to the higher self, alignment to love, to empowering perspectives. Because we can manifest as empowered beings and we can manifest as victims. Mm-hmm. We're manifesting whichever way we want to manifest. We know whichever one <laughs> we are, we are manifesting because we are beings of manifestation. That is how we breathe. We mm-hmm. take a breath, we're manifesting. We sleep, we're manifesting. And so I wanted to say the compassion and the awareness that it may not feel so comfortable when you yes. start. And it's about pushing through that discomfort, holding space with compassion and making sure that we're working with people like you, Star, mm-hmm. who can encourage the people that we are surrounded with, I think, are key. Oh, 100%. You know, those that come, you know, you know, those that come with the same message that inspire us using the books that are around us that act, that will help us to activate the courage um, and the intent to stay on track. So what kind of programs do you offer, Star? Um, one of the, the programs that I definitely do is through my app. So with the It's Glowing Well app, it, there are workshops inside, um, The app itself is very new, so there is new content that gets loaded every single month um, between workshops. Um, I'm a big believer with utilizing yoga as part of a manifestation tool. Um, So there's many yoga sessions in there. There's meditations. There's also affirmations and um, subliminals as well that are specifically um, there to help shift and rewire that subconscious mind Mm -hmm. because so many of our beliefs are so deep rooted into our subconscious that we, (laughs) with it being our subconscious, we're not even fully aware of that until we actually tap into that. And um, there will be, um, there are some really exciting things that are going to be advancing in the app as well. So there's going to be mini courses and there's going to be um, my signature program, which will most likely be launching by the end of this year. So, um, and then if anyone wants to work with me directly one-on-one, it is strictly by a requested email only. So I don't publicize it. I don't um, like, um, advertise it or do anything like that. It's strictly if people are are utilizing the app or they see my um, content out on social media, I've had, that's the way that I have accumulated um, my clientele is they strictly ask, can I please work with you one-on-one? Absolutely. You can, we will work that out. (laughs) Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. So what is the name of your app again? It's called it's glowing well, and it's on a, it's available on um, the Apple store as well as Google play. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, that's wonderful. And where are you based, Star? I'm in Wisconsin in the United States. It is currently, it's actually, believe it or not, it's nice here today. It's 40 degrees. <laughs> so um, but yeah, we're we're covered in snow and it's slippery. And um, but at the same time, it's really cozy. And I've learned to love snow. I've never used to love snow, but I love it now because there's a certain type of silence that comes with it because snow absorbs sound. And I've learned to embrace, this is just a little side note, but I've learned to embrace nature walks in the snow when I never used to. So it's nice and peaceful. (laughs) Yes. Mm. I love the life that you have created, Star. Oh, and thank I would you. love to know how you got to this place because that life did not just come Mm-mm. willy-nilly like that. <laughs> and after reading your bio, I know that you have been through quite a lot <laughs> in the past. And I would love to hear your story, a summary of it, because I know that we could we do, we do not have enough 
<laughs> of days to <laughs> right. capture all that mm-hmm. went on or all the stepping stones that got you. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I'd love to hear some of what you went through to be yeah. this empowered being that you are. I absolutely, I would love to. Um, so it really all started for me um, shortly after I read The Secret in 2007. And it was the night of my birthday. And I'll never forget it. It was in, it's in November, um, just before Thanksgiving. Sometimes my birthday falls on Thanksgiving. And I stayed up late and I was in my toxic relationship. And I was also a hundred pounds overweight at the time. And I walked up the stairs and I was completely out of breath. And I told myself, I'm like, okay, this is, this is not necessary. I have no excuses to be this way and to be this sedentary in my life. And something has to change. And I know now after reading The Secret that I can take control of this and do something about it. And that is um, exactly what I did. So I, I got a coach. I started um And I'll never forget it because I told them (laughs) when I sat down with my coach, I said, I'm not running, I'm not squatting, and I'm not eating salads. So (laughs) how do I lose weight? (laughs) I love it. (laughs) And they said, that's okay. We're just going to take this one step at a time. And it never became overwhelming. And as that happened, and as I progressed, and as I stayed determined and committed to healing my body and what I consider my temple of energy, I'm like, okay, that gave me the confidence then to really open my eyes as to what was going on in my toxic relationship. And once I established that, I was brave enough to move forward and take the steps necessary to leave that toxic relationship. And thus then I started following my intuition, which was you need to do what makes you happy. You need to be creative. You need to inspire and impact other people in a way that needs to be heard. And that aspect of it has certainly taken me a while, but at the same time, I feel it's ever evolving, ever moving, ever flowing. And it has been so beautiful. It's been the most beautiful, wonderful, encapsulating journey. And I'm so, so, so grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love the fact that you, because sometimes we think, oh, if you're in a toxic relationship, first you have to leave you we do not know that we have to gather strength Mm -hmm. we do not know that we have to replenish and restore first to get the courage because we're thinking that i will leave but we can never leave until we have that courage Mm -hmm. you began the work you began to empower yourself even in that toxic relationship Yes. Mm -hmm. Before you could then leave. And I think that's something that I I picked up and I do want to just um, use that to inspire anyone who is in that, that, who may be in that particular situation where we do not always have the strength and it's okay to Mm -hmm. get help Mm -hmm. before we get what we want. Yes. Getting help we can become much more okay with getting help when we need it. And so when you had, because I also have, I have a food coach Mm -hmm. and it's all about intuition. A food coach from a place of empowerment Mm -hmm. where I am actually um, in charge of, I can eat whatever I want Mm -hmm. and I can move however I want. For as long as I want or not, Mm -hmm. I am in control. And that places a different emphasis on what I do. Mm -hmm. Because we can take charge as empowered beings. And we think we're going to roll loose and run airwire when we are told you can do what you want. And initially I started out that way. 
Mm-hmm. And then I began to really come to terms with the fact that it is up to me. Yes. It's a beautiful, a different way of, of body management, food management, health management, when we know that it's not about anybody else. Mm-hmm. And it becomes a journey of, of, of power, of joy, mm-hmm. you know, of bliss, you know. And you know you don't you don't even look at what you're not prepared to eat. So you don't true. you know you, it's not even in your home. It's you know there 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 are different there are different habits that we begin to form, and be, being okay with being different. Yes, because we're so unique. We're so unique. Because I was a size twenty two UK size at <laughs> one point. Um, and then I I went down to fourteen. Um, so yeah. So how 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 did you lose? Um, how 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 did you go down? So um, it started with um, I honestly just started making two smoothies a day. That was something that my coach recommended. They're like, you based upon what I was doing because when I first started, they're like, okay, we want one full week to just see what you actually are doing. So don't change anything. And I said, okay. And then I came back and they said, okay, you are running the risk of being incredibly undernourished and malnourished with from vitamins and not having the proper nutrients that your body actually needs in order to function properly. And they're like, what you know, you don't want to eat a salad, totally fine. You don't have to, but let's get you going with some sort of fruit and veggie smoothie that you can make every day and get yourself going that way to get that in your body. And so that's what I did. I did two smoothies a day and I found that I was actually more like um, satisfied throughout my day. And I And here I had been consuming like pizzas, cheese, of course. I mean, I'm in Wisconsin (laughs) and it, you know, all of the, the stereotypical things. And I was walking that line and I just, as I did that and I started intaking, it opened me up to being like, well, what if I maybe have, you know, what if I try it like a salmon salad? Like I could do that. I like salmon and it's just like, it was such micro steps that led to the big changes and it was just consistent. It was, it's like compounding interest. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens all too often is we get so overwhelmed thinking like it has to be all or nothing and it's doesn't have to be that way. It's okay to take micro steps. It's okay to do it at your pace, which what feels right for you. And I'm a firm believer, like the the whole fad diet mentality. And I think sometimes it can be a great place to start, but in the end, it's always going to be up to you and what feels right for you. And a lot of the times those things, those, those like, um, highly commercialized ways of eating and doing those things are not sustainable. Mm-hmm. And I I think we need to allow ourselves that freedom. And like you were saying before, like that freedom um, to, to choose and be in control of that can be a little scary at first because it's like, we do think like, oh my gosh, what if what if I what if I just like totally like go crazy and <laughs> eat ice cream every day of the week and you know, and it's like you won't, you really won't because you're gonna come in touch with yourself and your intuition, and if you can just learn to trust that, it's gonna expand outward. It's gonna go inward, outward, and it's going to flow over to all the other aspects of your life. And I think that's just incredible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I I will say that when I took charge, I went nuts. I <laughs> ate all the things that I, but what I did not give up on were the beliefs that I was holding that I'll do better. 
out yes. of yeah. the beliefs, the beliefs that we hold, even when we have done something that we did not expect, or even when we feel out of control, that compassion to say, I'll do better. I still love myself. I'm still wonderful. I'm still mm -hmm. beautiful. And I will do better. I will do better. Not to give up. Mm -hmm. I think we are still manifestors. You know, even when we are running haywire or even when things become chaotic, we are remembering that we are still in power beings. Mm -hmm. And we can still come to a place of aligning to love, aligning to to empowerment. So how would you um, uh, express the beliefs that you were holding as you were going from leaving the relationship, losing the weight? How were you crafting your beliefs? What kind of manifest, um, what kind of um, affirmations were you, did you find helpful? Two, three affirmations that you found helpful through that process. Oh, I love that. That's a great question. Okay. Um, I would say I, the one that I still use to this day, and I love it, is I am capable and worthy of all that I desire and aspire to be. And I still use that affirmation to this day. Um. Another one that I used in um, in regards to uh, my toxic relationship was, I am stronger than I know, and every day I get even stronger. And when it came to um, my weight loss and my health, it, it was very similar in the fact of every day in every way, I am in control of my health and my well-being. Mm. And those were usually, those are like the the top ones that I recall really well. And like I said, the first one um, where I am worthy, I am capable of all that I desire and aspire to be. I still use that one to this day for things that I want in the future. <laughs> and I know that when we say these things, it may initially sound very, very wrong because the physical ego self will say, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> 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 yes and you know that the ego is a very um, interesting thing mm -hmm. and I've learned you know it, it's an ongoing working relationship together <laughs> but I've learned that in a lot of ways you know the ego isn't necessarily a bad thing it's really in place to help protect us and sometimes our higher selves really just have to be like no no we're okay. Thank you. Thank you for looking out for my well-being. Thank you for looking out for me. But I promise you I got this. Because the ego is is a whole nother little entity that's like right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love the way you said it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship that I think is founded in love and compassion. That's yeah. soothing, soothing. The ego um really needs to come to believe as you said that the higher self is looking out for it and to come, mm -hmm. to, surrender, to, mm -hmm. come to surrender and it's it's a it's it's a journey um i believe that it's a journey and it is something that um we have to do consciously it doesn't mm -hmm. just happen um when that trigger comes, as we're saying, the affirmations, the powerful affirmations, we are taking a breath and allowing that um, ego self to feel safe, mm -hmm. to feel safe, making sure that we remember that we are consciousness itself yes. and we are not the ego. And when that voice comes, we know that that is not us, our true self. And I think that's important because we sometimes believe that that voice is us. Mm -hmm. And knowing that that voice that is counteracting the belief, the empowering belief, is coming out of fear, is coming out of some trauma imprint, which could be ancestral. And it's mm -hmm. about how we come to soothe and calm so we can relax, 
feel safe and surrender. It's a yeah. soothing that takes place. And I, and I know there are lots of attachment theories that say that we have to come to a place with the ego self where the ego feels safe and soothed and secure. In order to surrender and come to allow, allow that affirmation that we are wanting to manifest to be. Because all parts of us have to come to alignment for manifestation to take place. Absolutely. The different parts of us that have to come to alignment and surrender. Um, so I love those affirmations, really powerful, and come into a place where it becomes a dominant fre frequency, dominant vibration, and that puts us in the vortex, doesn't it? We, mm -hmm. put, we are vibrating. When the ego is surrendered and we're allowing, feeling safe, we find ourselves in that vortex where we just manifest that timeline. We jump mm -hmm. because we know that we're living in a in in a in a universe of timelines, and yes. every 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 affirmation we have is a timeline, is a reality that we have to find a way into that reality through our inner healing. Mm -hmm using your tools, using my modality, my book, <laughs> Daily Soul Bites. And modalities are different for everybody. You know, different levels, different affirmations require different modalities. Like mm -hmm. you had to get a, a food coach. You, you may have had very powerful affirmations, but if you did not get a food coach as a, to, 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 to use their modality and we're, we are drawn to certain things, and those things are not coincidences. Mm -hmm. But that's the process that allows us to, as the ego self, to surrender. Mm -hmm. So knowing the modality through trial and error, through simple trial and error, I found that allows us to surrender as our ego selves to the higher self, to that higher self, affirmation the empowered loving affirmation because those affirmations you just mentioned are higher perspective affirmations they don't belong to the ego <laughs> 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 they're perspectives that the that the that the higher so this is why we have to repeat them again and again and again um i have affirmations that i say that i listen to i <laughs> I, I I use different ways of getting them into me, of programming yeah. myself. I, I say it, I listen to it, I read it. I write it. <laughs> I write, yes. <laughs> because we are rewiring, reprogramming. And sometimes I'm listening to some liminal affirmations till mm -hmm. my ears pop. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to them 24 hours. I've got the earphones on. And I'm programming and I'm loving myself. And then I hit, I hit that surrender. Yes. And when it becomes a dominant frequency, then I can feel, I can feel myself in that timeline. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the timeline, timeline I'm in as a different body. Mm -hmm. I, let's not even go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> because we think we are changing. Billions yeah. of times per second. We're not the same body that we, we are. So the person no. that you were with before you made the affirmation is not the same per it's not the same body that totally you, it's mm -hmm. a different person. But, yep. It's a different timeline. Um and I find marks on myself that were not there before. Mm -hmm. And I know, uh oh no, you were not there. Mm -hmm. So those things no longer surprise me. Because I know that as the, the, the timeline where I am enjoying what I'm manifesting had a different body mm -hmm. or a different skin. And it's all about acceptance, compassion, and love. Oh, when so we, much, yes. <laughs> when, we, when we come to that realization, um, because we may find ourselves in a timeline. I'm loving talking to you, but I, I will. <laughs> I will ask. I you. love talking with you. <laughs> I will. I will ask you this question: What will you tell your clients if they say to you that I am in this timeline, or I have manifested 
the man of my dreams. Um, but um, his, the family that is in do not necessarily resonate with me. So this is it. We manifest what we want, but there are other aspects of that reality that do not necessarily align with us. Because mm -hmm. that happens a lot where mm -hmm. we are wanting a particular job, we're wanting a particular partner, we're wanting a particular body. Mm -hmm. But we get to that timeline and we are now enjoying that particular desire or affirmation that or belief. But there are other aspects of it that we then need to come to terms with. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, I would say if there was an aspect that isn't totally right, I think one of the biggest things that I think as a whole needs to happen is nothing is ever going to be like there's always going to be some sort of outside force that is always going to come in. And I think what needs to happen in those situations is if something enters into your realm and you don't fully resonate with it, or you just don't jive with that particular person or whatever the case may be, it is okay to not have the same views. It is okay to not necessarily like see eye to eye. But what matters is that the two people involved in that situation can at least respect each other. If that can't happen, then a whole nother situation has to be reevaluated between like, if I am with like, let's say someone is trying to manifest the love of their life and say like a sister-in-law or a brother-in-law or whatever the case may be, um, isn't jiving with you. Okay, well, you know, you might need to assess the situation. How often are you with that person? How often are you going to see them? You know, how how is that interaction actually going to happen? And if it's something where it really can't come to terms, then it is something that you have to sit down with your loved one and really have a discussion with because you guys are going to have to come to a mutual understanding and whatever that may be. So it could be as simple as, well, I may not be able to do every single family function together that happens if we're doing this long term with each other. It may be, you know what, we really can't have common ground. And, you know, I am a big believer that family will always come before anything. And if if it can't happen, then it can't happen. And, you know, in a worst case scenario, maybe we have to go our separate ways, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not together. Because I think no matter what, you should not ever have to sacrifice one iota of who you are for the sake of someone else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if that is something that would have to happen, that is a really tough position to be in. I completely empathize, but you're really going to have to check in with yourself and really make a tough decision on what where you're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. to check in to check in with yourself because mm -hmm. this is where it begins to go with it yes yeah because that's that's something about you know we we have so i i think we have a gazillion beliefs within us so so, so oh, many. Uh, absolutely there is there's always um a, another part of us that needs to be healed needs mm -hmm. to allow whatever it is that we have asked for to to be to be mm -hmm. um and this is why i always love talking about levels um when we get to one level and we've manifested that dream and we see something else that is not exactly aligning i love what you said to check in mm -hmm. to check in and to say oh where else am i holding some belief that i am not worth enjoying this because I have manifested this love, I've manifested this job, I've manifested this child. Now, what level am I at? I'm at another level. 
but not to throw away, not to think that what we have manifested is wrong, mm -hmm. not to leave and lose that and go back. Right. But to keep moving forward, mm -hmm. to believe, to believe in our own self, to check in and to say, okay, so I've got this, I'm holding this, I'm holding this child, I'm holding this love, and I'm going to now find out what is it within me I need to get clear about and move forward with that. Loving myself, loving my own self and getting clarity. I love that. I love Thank you so much, Sarah. Do you have any last words on manifestation about the modalities you use or anything like that before we um, No, no, I, I feel like we really covered it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love those letters behind you, the words oh, behind you. Love you. more, embrace yes. life, chase dreams, laugh, laugh out loud. Sing often, think. Positive. Radiate joy, see beauty, and be happy. <laughs> oh, yes, I love that. Thank you so much for joining me today, Star. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank my audience as well for joining me today. I invite you to subscribe to our videos on YouTube. I invite you to get a copy, to grab a copy of Daily Soul Bites. It's now on Kindle Select on Amazon.co.uk. And it's also online. The paperback is online anywhere books can be found. So subscribe to us and share far and wide so we can have more of this content available to those who may need it. And I look forward to seeing you on the very next episode of Daily Soul Bites Show. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.